Hi students, welcome to the Baiju Sindhu News Analysis for 22nd of December 2018. So let's get started. So let's look into the first article. So the first article says furor in Rajya Sabha over order on data interception. So what is the context here? So the Home Ministry had recently issued a notification which authorized about 10 agencies of security to intercept data on the computers. mobile devices and servers that have been used by the indians for the purpose of security of the country and this has caused unrest and furor in the parliament where the opposition have come together and have catcalled the government as a police state as well as the surveillance state so what did the home ministry notification say so it has given its authorization to about 10 agencies so which are these one you have the intelligence bureau then narcotics control bureau enforcement direct third central board of direct taxes directorate of revenue intelligence central bureau of investigation national investigation agency research and analysis wing that is the external agency raw directorate of signal intelligence which is restricted to areas of jammu kashmir northeast as well as assam as well as delhi police so what these agencies would be able to do is they would be able to intercept the information monitor these set of individuals decrypt any any information that these set of individuals have either served they have operated generated or transmitted and received and stored in any computer means so this has created a ruckus in the parliament because the opposition are calling this move as a surveillance state or a police state where the government keenly wants to watch what an individual is doing so the opposition have come together and they have gone on to say that this particular idea of the government giving permission to the agencies giving permission to the authorities means that the government wants to constantly watch what an individual is doing this is a breach of privacy but this particular call has not been taken easily by the government the government has also substantiated it what the government has gone on to say is we have not come up with a new notification we have not come up with something new what we have done is there was already a particular provision and that was in reference to the information technology act of 2000 and there is a particular section called as section 69 of 1 which goes on to say that there could be a provision for interception of information from computer resources there is already a provision in the information technology and this particular provision already explains that we would be able to intercept information for about five domains so what are these five domains that the government speaks about one is in terms of the country sovereignty and integrity next the security of the state friendly relations with the foreign states public order or incitement to offense so while there is already an existing provision it is these through provisions that we have laid legitimacy so earlier there was no institution that was laid out so as a result any institution can fiddle with it and they could extract information but what have we done in this particular procedure is we have laid an information we have laid a framework where only these set of agencies would be able to intercept the information and that is in relevance to section 69 of the information technology act so what it has gone on to say is all these agencies which were not earlier mentioned are now mentioned so except for these domainal agencies none of them would be able to intercept this particular information so what this article further goes on to say is section 69 was amended in 2008 to enable the state and the central governments to intercept monitor or decrypt any information transmitted through received or stored in a computer further the rule says that rules were framed in 2009 setting out the procedure and safeguards rule 3 says the competent authority the home secretary in the center as well as the state alone can issue an interception so what the government has gone on to say is that the government currently says that the opposition is going on a criticism mode but this does not hold good why because there is already an established precedent so what is the safety that the government has taken here so what it has said is that every interception whether it is these agencies that are intercepting information of an individual this will need to get the permission of the home secretary at the central level as well as in the state level and this will also go to a review panel which is headed by the cabinet secretary and all that these set of interceptors will have to do is they'll have to say under what domain 
what provisions are they planning to extract the information from is it going to be a threat to the security of india only then the permission would be given is it going to have an unfriendly relationship with india because of this information then only then permission would be given is it going to incite violence in the society only then information can be extracted so it is only these five domains that is currently voiced in section 69 only for such the government would be able to give permission under the home secretary and this will further have the review of the cabinet secretary so there is already a provision of safety that has been incorporated so whatever the opposition or cat calling or criticizing does not hold bounds and further it says rule forces that competent authority may authorize a government agencies to carry out the task further the present order naming 10 agencies has been issued under rule 4 it does not introduce any new surveillance norm or the rule so what we have done is we have already used the set precedents set laws set rules and then we have institutionalized the mechanism and it says further it goes on to say this particular interception order will be in force only for a maximum of of 60 days rules have also been framed outlining the intermediary's responsibility so this particular information is only there for about 60 days this is already laid out in this particular rule so what we are saying is this particular idea that we are acting as a police state acting as a surveillance state is not going good because we have just institutionalized the whole mechanism so what we have to further understand in this article is there have been certain concerns that That have been voiced by the privacy experts. So, what do the privacy experts basically go on to say? So, what they say is this interception process that is currently in the executive domain will also require the judicial oversight. It will require certain safeguards, and we also have to relook in terms of the recent Supreme Court judgment. So, we know for the fact that the Supreme Court has come up with the privacy judgment or the Putraswamy judgment, where the Supreme Court has gone on to say that in case there is an issue of security. security or a sovereignty issue then the government will have to balance the security as well as the privacy issue but is the government doing in this particular case not actually so what the privacy experts have gone on to say is even if there is an interception or an extraction of information there has to be a balancing of privacy as well as this fund which is is fundamental right which has to go in line with the security which the government is currently not doing further what we have to understand is the government said that the interception order will be in force for only a maximum of 60 days but what we have to understand here is it has a deeper meaning and the deeper meaning is whether this particular information that is extracted out of this particular individual which is against his privacy because he is not given permission to it will it be deleted or it will be retrieved or will it be retrieved by the investigating agencies for the future this particular point is not taken into picture so you have already extracted the information but what about this information is it going to be in the databases of the investigating agencies will it be used once again and again or is it going to be deleted this is nowhere mentioned in this particular draft apart from this this notification is also silent on the due procedure what if this particular information that the investigating agencies have taken up has also caused to breach of information what if this information goes to those particular set of people who are not supposed to have it what is the penalizing provisions all this is again not mentioned in this particular order so what this article goes on to say is that there have been certain issues when it comes to the privacy and there have been issues with respect to the security as well so this needs a balance and for this what we have to do is we need to have a judicial precedence judicial scrutiny as well as safeguards that needs to be provided in case this particular thing has to be institutionalized so this is what we need to understand in reference to this article. article moving on let's look into the next article so the next article says himachal kerala and tamil nadu top development index so what is the context here so according to the report that have been released by the niti aayog it goes on to say that himachal pradesh kerala 
Tamil Nadu have been ranked highest in terms of being on track to achieve the United Nations Sustainable Developmental Goals according to its first of its kind remote. So first important point that we have to understand here is why did the Niti Ayo come up with such an index? So the key point here is the competitive mode. Currently when you put up such kind of reports into a public forum, states will start competing amongst themselves in terms of the poverty elevation, in terms of the employment provision in terms of the gender equality or in terms of combating the climate change what this particular proposal will go on to do is it will instill a mode of competition among all these states so that they are able to improve their performance on the social indices and this will ultimately mean that India will progress towards achieving its goals by the year 2030 so what this basically means is that we are putting this particular index on a public forum so that all states by looking into the other states will start competing, reduce the poverty, reduce the gender equality and make sure India also moves towards the achievement of the sustainable developmental goals. So what this article further goes on to say is that Niti Hayog has ranked every state based on its performance on 13 sustainable goals. So currently what we have is about 17 sustainable goals but it has taken into picture only 13 of them. Why? Because there are about four goals let's say for example the climate action or sustainable use or something to do with the marine resources. These are the set of data that we currently don't have because we lack all these data that is an aggregate of about 13 are considered by the Niti Aayog. So this index code used for the measurement of about 0 to 100 where a score of 100 signifies that the national target for 2030 has been achieved and while 0 denotes it was the worst performing state. So any state which has gone closer and closer to 100 it means they have had a proper implementation, they have schemes and policies for the implementation of the sustainable developmental goals but in case it is closer to zero then it means that the state governments are not working out in a productive way in order to minimize the balance that is there in terms of the poverty so there are about 17 goals which starts from SD1 to about SD17 so what this article says is that Kerala Goa and Karnataka are the states which are at the top when it comes to the top performing states and this is followed by the bottom performance which includes Uttar Pradesh, Bihar as well as Odisha. So this index that we are speaking about is a composite score for each state as well as the union territory and the average Indian score for this is about 57. So when you look into the naming and the ranking convention among the states, Kerala, Himachal Pradesh are the forefronters which have an index score of about 69 and among the union territories, Chandigarh is in the forefront with a score of about 68. So what is the most important point is there can be a factual information that can be asked in your prelims examination so kindly remember which are the states which are performing better and which are the states are at the bottom level which includes Uttar Pradesh, Bihar and Odisha as well. Now that we have understood what these sustainable developmental goals are which are 17 in number which covers all the social and economic developmental issues like ending up of poverty, ending hunger, ensuring healthy lives and promoting the well-being, ensuring quality education. What we have to understand also is how were these goals chosen up. So when we look, go back to the history what we have is the millennium developmental goals. So these set of millennium developmental goals were usually drawn by a group of men so they didn't have much of negotiation and interaction so few men come up together in the United Nations and they draw a particular plan and they give about eight goals and that becomes the Millennium Developmental Goals however when it comes to the sustainable developmental model the UN has conducted the largest stakeholder program so they've had debates they've asked opinions they have negotiated they have interacted with all types of people and that is how they were able to draw certain information and they came up with these set of 17 global rules. Well, what is important here is we have to understand now that this particular goals have already been given there are certain criticisms. So what are these criticisms that we are speaking about? So when you look into the sustainable developmental goals there are 
too far and vague in number there are about 17 global goals but what we fail to understand in this particular case is each country has its own set of problems so what this particular model currently proposes is a rigid model it does not give a flexibility to the country to come up innovate re-innovate and come up with their own set of issues solutions to this particular problem it has given a particular goal and all these countries will have to stick to this rigid approach instead of a flexible approach the next important point that we have to understand is now that we have realized that there are about 17 goals which are very vague in number however what is also of importance is that we have to understand who is going to provide the funding to all these set of goals so you have the developed countries you also have the developing countries the developed countries have already used all the resources in the earth they are comparatively industrialized but now they are little reluctant to provide the funding we recently also have the United States of America withdrawing from the climate summit they are not ready to propose these set of funding they are not even providing the technological upgrades so in this backdrop how will the developing countries achieve this particular sustainable developmental model while the funding that was supposed to be given by the developed countries to the developing countries are not being given and at the same time this particular idea of sustainable developmental goals currently looks at it in a form of a binary form so what do we mean by it it basically means that it is either success or failure what about the growth factor what about the gradual increase that has happened over a period of time so you cannot weigh a particular idea or a particular commodity only on the basis of a success or a failure that is in the form of zeros or ones there are also intermittents there is something called as the gradual upgradation that has happened this will not be looked up by the sustainable developmental goals so this also needs to be relooked into is one of the criticisms and apart from this whatever goals that have been laid by the sustainable developmental model are not binding on any of the countries so because it is not binding because it is voluntary countries will be little hesitant to invest a lot of money on this and because there has been funding which has declined by the developed countries these set of voluntary acts will not be completely compiled by so these are some of the negative ideas or the criticisms when it comes to the sustainable developmental model so this is what we need to understand in reference to this article so moving on let's look into the next article so the next article is in reference to the Anchar Lake so we will have to understand certain important facts so this is a lake in the region of Jammu and Kashmir so the lake is connected with a famous Dal Lake via a channel called as the Amir Khan Nalla and Dal is also called as Srinagar's Jewel or Jewel in the Crown of Kashmir. But why are we discussing about the Anchar Lake? So basically this lake as over a period of time has a lot of pollution within this particular region. So this lake with time has seen an increase in the pollution due to the discharge of untreated effluents. So the water has got so much contaminated due to direct dumping of the sewage as well as the waste materials in the lake due to increase in the human activity as well as constant encroachment in and around that particular area so because of the increase in the pollution what you will also see is that the flora and fauna within this particular Anchar lake has also been destroyed and it is now infested with weeds that is why Anchar lake becomes important when it comes to your GS3 paper that is to do with the environment and these are the key important facts when it comes to your prelims examination so moving on let's look into the next article so the next article says hefty fines if states fail to give plans to clean up rivers says the NJT so what is the whole article all about so what happens is you have the river the river is getting polluted every now and then so because the NJT that is the national green terminal realize that all these rivers are important for the livelihood they ask the state government to come up with suitable measures or an action plan but even after the NJT coming up and telling the states as well as the union territories number of states have failed to comply by the orders of the NJT so in order to address this particular issue what the NJT has gone on to say is that we the NJT gave you an order to come up with an action plan but there are about 16 states which have submitted these but these are incomplete action plans because the action plans are incomplete what we will be taking up is a penalizing provision so what it has gone on to say is in case there is a particular state 
or an union territory which is not ready to comply by the orders of the NJT, we would be asking the states to pay certain fines and this would be in the form of 1 crore per month if it is a priority 1 river and if it is a priority 2 stretch then it will be about 50 lakh per month for the stretchers and if it is a priority 3 river it will be about 25 lakh per month each for the priority 4 as well as the priority 5. So it has gone on to say that this particular state or an union territory which fails to reciprocate back with an action plan we will be penalizing them and such penalized money which will be used for the rejuvenating this particular river. What the NJT has gone on to do is it has given a deadline of certain days that these particular states and the union territories will have to comply by an action plan or not NJT will go up with the penalizing provisions. So this is what we need to understand in reference to this article. So moving on let's look into the next article. So the next article is important from the prelims perspective and what we are speaking about is the Atang Ani. So what does this Atang Ani? This is also called as the Ficus Elastica which basically means mother rubber tree in the Adi dialect. So this is in the region of Arunachal Pradesh. So this is in Kalek village, a remote village under the Pang forest division in the Siang district in Arunachal Pradesh. So this region accommodates the Adi community. So it is their name that is why it is called as the mother rubber tree. So this particular region of Atangani which is one of the trees present in this region attracts variety of birds. So people are also popularizing trekking in the region so that they can bank on the tourism as well. And birds in the area include the great hornbill, the sunbird, the white-tailed robin, bowing, collar tree pea, the parrot bill as well as the strike babbler. So what we have to understand is this particular word called as Atang any basically means it's a kind of a rubber and because it has grown in lot of numbers what this basically means is it is trying to attract people towards this particular region one in the form of trekking and the other in the form of increasing the tourism sector as a result of which the employment will completely increase and there could also be infrastructure development because of this particular region. So this is what we need to understand in reference to this article. So moving on let's look into the next article. So even before we look into this editorial what we have to understand is a practice question. So this Munro Turutu island seen in news is in which state? It is in Kerala. So let's look into the map for the same. So this is the map. So the Munro Turutu island is here. It is in the state of Kerala. So what we have to understand in this particular case is three important factual information from the prelims perspective. So the Munro island, the Munro Turutu is an inland island in the Kollam district in Kerala. And this is a string of eight islets at the confluence of Ashtamudi Lake as well as the Kalada River. So the place is named in honor of resident colonel journal Munro of the former princely state of Travancore. So why are we discussing this article? That is because there is an editorial on page 7 which is important and this is speaking about the sinking island of Kerala. So what this basically means is there is lot and lot of inundation of water in and around this particular area and that is why it is called as the sinking island of Kerala. So what is the concerns? So what this article goes on to speak about is certain concerns when it comes to this particular Munro Island. So what we have to understand here is because of the increase in the water, because of increase in the inundation of water within this particular region, what the future generation are worried are with respect to their houses. They already have their houses. So because of the increase in the water, what is happening is the strength of the houses are reducing and because there is decrease in the strength, there could be certain collapses and when there is collapse what is the resultant is loss of the life and apart from this what we have to understand is the scarcity of the drinking water so because there is large scale inundation of water the drinking water facility comparatively reduces and then what they also have to do is they'll have to make sure that there is transportation of water that takes place immediately when there is inundation of water into their houses because they also lack the drinking water this could also lead to certain health 
concerns and this may result into dehydration and so on and the most important point is as water enters their houses what we have to realize is it may lead to certain unhygienic conditions what do we mean by it so because there is an increase in the water activity there could be certain types of silt that is carried this can be a kind of an irritation for the skin so because of the unhygienic activity there can be certain skin ailments which is what this article further goes on to speak about and the next important point it speaks about is in terms of the connectivity so now there is increase in the water in this particular area what could be the problem is the roads that were earlier there are completely filled by the water so there have been places like Pattaturuttu or Peningalam which do not have the motorable roads and when you do not have the roads that will provide the endpoint connectivity this can be a problem to the elders the pregnant women and people with certain serious health issues and what could be the problem there have been instances where pregnant women have even delivered on the roads so because of this inundation of water sinking island has connectivity issues and this could be a major problem to all those people who are suffering from major ailments and the next key important point is now that this particular region had certain agricultural fields but now that this particular agricultural field has also been filled with water what did the farmers do they started looking into alternate occupations and one such profession was to do with the aquaculture but in spite of they entering the aquaculture what is happening with time is we saw that recently there was a devastation because of the Kerala floods and because of the increase in the water because of the Kerala floods the chemical properties of this particular region has also changed and when there is change in the chemical properties there has been vanishing of the plankton there is decrease in the population of the plankton as a result the fish which were living in this area have also lessened and that is why the livelihood means of this particular commodity is also being questioned and the most important point is in reference to the Tenmala dam so this particular dam was constructed in the year 1961 and what this article speaks about is that this Tenmala dam under the Kallada irrigation as well as the tree crop improvement venture is also a cause of problem why let us try to understand this so basically this particular Tenmala dam is constructed in the region of Kerala and this is one of the tourism hubs and this is in the area that is surrounded by Shendurni Wildlife Sanctuary but what is the concern that have been voiced by the Tenmala dam so what was happening earlier is before the construction of the dam there was free flow of water so this free flow of water did not have any sediments and as a result it was a fresh water this could have been used for the irrigation this could have been used for the agricultural purposes this could also be used for the drinking water purposes but with respect to this construction of the Tenmala dam what has happened is it has blocked the fresh water so because it has blocked the fresh water they are not able to have the drinking water and at the same time the agricultural production that was happening in that particular area especially when it comes to the coconut has completely dried up and because of it the coir industry which is a major byproduct of this particular coconut industry has also suffered so because of this sinking island what we see is all these areas have been looked into and these are the concerns that have been voiced so there have been previously n number of surveys that have done and they are not able to concurrently say it is because of this particular reason that there has been an increase in the water inundation of water and that is why that part will not be discussed but there could be probable solutions so what are the solutions so the MP of this particular region has gone on to say that we would be in a position to come up with certain amphibious house let's take for example the floating type or that which is built on the stilts so these these are some of the probable solutions what we can also do is currently what we see in this particular area is increase in the tourism in case we are not able to make sure that it is a sustainable what we can do is we can reduce the amount of tourists who are flocking up to this particular region and this particular area can also be used as a model showcasing the terrifying consequences of the global warning so you need to come up with certain alternatives and that is what this particular 
article goes on to speak about so moving on let's look into the next article so the next article that we are speaking about Lok Sabha panel suggests automatic suspension so what is this article speaking about so we all know for the fact that there is an Hindu hat so you have the professor and you have the students who are listening to the professor so the professor goes on to explain about the temple of democracy and that is the parliament so he wants the students to acknowledge and enact a play as to how the parliament functions so you have the opposition you also have the government in picture so the lecturer goes on to say that enact as the ones that is happening in the parliament and what do you see immediately a huge ruckus people tearing apart throwing papers getting to the will and cursing each other throwing those abusive words and this is what is happening in the parliament directly so what is this article goes on to speak about so you have number of parliamentarians who enter into the well of the house the speaker would have still told not to do it in spite of repeated interventions in spite of repeated warnings the legislators enter into the well of the house create a ruckus not complying by the rules of the procedure that has been laid in the Lok Sabha as well as in the Rajya Sabha so in order to address this particular issue what we have to understand is that the rules committee of the Lok Sabha which is an advisory body to speaker Sumitra Mahajan suggested automatic suspension of members who troop into the well of the house or disrupt the proceedings despite being repeatedly warned by the speaker so what we have to understand here is the constitutional principle so let's get back to article 118 so article 118 clearly provides about the rules of procedure of both Lok Sabha as well as the Rajya Sabha so according to this particular act what we have is certain rules that have been laid both in Lok Sabha as well as in the Rajya Sabha so 118 subsection 1 says each house of the parliament may make rules regulations subject to the provisions of the constitution it provides to the procedure and code of the prisoners so according to this particular article 118 the Lok Sabha has come up with certain Lok Sabha rules and the Raj Sabha has also come up with certain Raj Sabha rules and one such rule is in the form of rule 374 which basically deals with the suspension of the members in the Lok Sabha currently when we look into the procedure right what happens is in case there is a particular person who disregards the authority of the speaker authority of the speaker and the chair abuses the rules of the house and persistently and willfully obstructs the business then in that particular case the speaker as a person who is responsible for running the house of the Lok Sabha has that particular power under rule 374 where she would be able to suspend that particular person for a period not exceeding the remainder of the session so this is the present condition however what the rules committee has gone on to say is it has recommended a particular suggestion where it has said that in case there is a particular person who does not comply by the orders of the speaker then he should be suspended for five consecutive six things or the remainder of the session whichever is lesser and how does this happen once the warning has been given by the speaker the house would have to be immediately adjourned and a responsible period of time is taken by the secretary general in the Lok Sabha and then he enlists who that particular person is and this person will be suspended immediately and how does the approval mechanism goes so now that the rules committee is one of those advisory committees which has laid this particular order this particular order will be looked into by the Lok Sabha secretariat and this will have to be given approved by the chairperson and then again this will be discussed for the consideration in the form of memorandum so this is what we need to understand in reference to this article let's look into the next article so the next article is taken up from the Hindu website itself so this is speaking about one of the exoplanets so what we are discussing is about HD 219134 so the researchers have discovered a new exotic planet outside our solar system in the constellation of Cassiopeia so this is located 21 light years away from the earth and this planet dubbed as HD 219134b has a mass almost five times that of the earth which is why it is considered as a super earth unlike the earth however it most likely does not have a massive core of iron but it is rich in aluminium 
alongside magnesium and silicon so because it does not have the presence of iron like the earth is that is why these planets do not have a magnetic field like the earth it shines red to blue like the rubies and the sapphires because these gemstones are aluminium oxides which are common on the exoplanet so this is one of the candidates likely to belong to new exotic class of exoplanets the other two exoplanets studied are 55 cancri e as well as waf 47 E. So this HD 219134, 55 Cancri E as well as Watch 47 E are the exoplanets. These are very factual in nature. This is what we need to understand when it comes to this article. So moving on, let's look into some of the practice questions. It says Kaval Wildlife Century is in Telangana. So let's look into this article. So this particular article is taken from Tiger Reserve gets a sniffer dog and that is why we have taken up this particular article so this kaval tiger reserve is in the region of telangana so let's look into some of the previous year questions so it says how does the national rural livelihood mission seek to improve livelihood options of rural poor by setting up a large of new manufacturing industries and agribusiness centers in rural areas by strengthening self-help groups and providing skill development by supplying seeds fertilizer diesel pump sets and micro irrigation equipment free of cost so only option two is right the one and three are wrong that is why the answer for this is two only so let's look into some of the mains practice question what are sustainable developmental goals it is said SDGs are too many in number leading to ambiguity comment so kindly write all your answers on the comment section so you guys can have a peer review and the Baiju's team can also give you a relevant feedback for the same so this is it for today thank you for watching all the best